Good morning. You're watching the FNO show on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I'm Navneet Saluja D'Souza. Good morning, Navneet. I'm Agam Vakil, the top headlines. Markets continue to gain for the sixth straight day. India wakes declines. An open interest surges in NIT Tech and Dani Ports as traders take fresh positions in, its, in their respective futures. In Fortis Healthcare jumps as, ma, as the board approves the IHH Healthcare's offer to take over the hospital chain. In Sand Falls, 5% in intraday trade after reporting a weak set of numbers for the June quarter. And Infosys is expected to stick to its revenue guidance when it comes to its first quarter results today. All right, and that's going to be the big uh, earning for the day emphasis. We'll be watching out for those numbers. But let's tell you what's happening with the markets right now. Well, the upswing continues, at least for Nifty in today's trading session, uh, sitting with gains of nearly 33 points. And Sensex also sitting with gains of about 150 points. Will a bank Nifty? Let's see what's happening on that front. The PSU banking index, however, today has seen a beating. Uh, it's down almost 2% in trade. But bank Nifty is just about flattish. Looks like some support coming in from uh, the heavy weights in today's session. So open interest higher by almost 6%. But remember, both the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank futures have been trading at a discount. And I think the discount has widened for Bank Nifty. That's at 47 points. Let's pull up Nifty futures also and check what's the current uh, discount. It's 14. Remember, yesterday's closing discount was almost about 7 points. So the markets are inching higher, but the futures uh, discount has been widening. So definitely watch out for that parameter. Open interest higher only about 2% as we speak. Some bit of underperformance seen for, from the broader market indices. We did see in the second half also yesterday, the mid-cap and the small-cap index came off the day's high. So they've started on a weak footing, at least in today's session. Good news is uh, this market has been supported by lower volatility, and India WIX in today's session has once again seen a correction of over 1%, almost 1.5% thereabouts. Let's tell you what's happening on the option side. Remember the put writing, which was seen in yesterday's uh, level. It's, it's gone up to higher strikes from 10,900 to almost 11,000 put strike. That's the open interest change there. The red bars are your put strike. So today also we've seen addition on the put side coming in on the 11,900, 800. All of them have seen over put writing coming about 10,600, which is sitting with maximum open interest. That started to see some bit of unwinding. But look at uh, the call strikes. Now it's moving to the higher levels. 11,200 call has seen open interest addition coming by at least so far. So put writing continues. But I want to I want to pull up the Nifty PCR if we can. Remember PCR has moved higher on back of higher put writing. Yesterday's closing was somewhere about 1.73, so it still remains around the same level. Uh, do watch out for this uh, data during the day because uh, now, as per our uh, experts, what they tell us on our show that anything above 1.7, 1.8 indicates that the market could be in an overbought situation. Let's talk about the FIs then. Well, we've been getting positive cues from them at least for the week. On the index futures now, they are net long uh, at 51%. Remember, they started the series at 35%. Yesterday, almost 15,000 contracts were added. But not to forget, throughout this week, on the long side, FIs have added over 50,000 contracts. So that's telling you long positions are definitely continuing. But some bit of hedging of cash portfolios is definitely taking place when it comes to the index option side again. Well, uh, it's the usual suspects once again, which are looking at substantial increase in open interest and NIT technologies along with KPIT Tech are standing, standing right at the top. But Pine Tree is not too far behind. So we're actually seeing more longs building in all these three mid-cap IT companies. But Adani Ports is a new one in the list. That's seen longs right now, another 9% out of there. And Apollo Hospitals on the losing end, uh, fresh shorts building in, even as the underlying declines by as much as 2%. Uh, 2%. Uh, can we pull up the list of those stocks which are seeing unwinding? Not too much to speak for. We do have some unwinding in Jet Airways after the sharp surge yesterday. Not only in Jet Airways, but Interglobe Aviation as well. Dish TV, CG Power, and HCC, not too much to speak for. Uh, it's going to be yet another day where we're going to see continuing addition in open interest towards longs in mid-cap IT counters. Well, IT remains the theme, Agam, not only for the day, but also for 2018 at least so far. We'll get you some views on these stock futures, but before we invite our guest on the show, here's a reminder for you all. If you have any queries in the futures and options market, please call us now on 022-4540-4141. Write to us on Twitter, Facebook, and for the ones who are watching our show on YouTube, you can write your queries on that platform. Also, just don't forget to add 
at the AskPQ hashtag. Let's welcome our experts then, Jay Thakkar of Anand Rati and Navneet Daga of IFL Wealth are here with us. Good morning to both of you gentlemen. Jay, let me come to you. We've reclaimed the 11,000 mark. I think markets are now watching out for the all-time high levels of 11,170. Uh, would you be maintaining your long positions on Nifty right now? Hi, good morning to you. Absolutely, I'll be, you know, uh, continue to, you know, stay positive in the markets. The reason is that we have clearly seen a fresh breakout on the upside uh, from the range uh, within which market was trading, that is 10,930 to 10,550. And uh, that's more or less 400 points range. So from the breakout level, if you see right from the higher levels of 10,930, then obviously, you know, on the arithmetic scale, you'll be seeing Nifty, in fact, climbing towards the levels of 11,300 plus. However, for the short term, I would say, uh, as per the LA2 perspective, the minimum target has to be about a bit above the previous swing high, and that comes to 11,188. So I would say that yes, we maintain a, uh, long positions, uh, and on the lower side, I would say that 10,930 will now act as a very crucial support uh, for the short term until those levels are not broken. The higher tops, higher bottom formation continues, and hence uh, the trend remains up. Okay, so the trend remains up. Uh, Navneet, good morning to you as well. Do you also believe the trend is uh, moving up higher? And based on that, what's your view? Hi, good morning, Agam. Uh, look, uh, the data fronts are getting improved and uh, there have been seen FI covering shots. There have been uh, the index features repositioning getting increased on the, on the long side now. Uh, somewhat it has been uh, visible uh, that the, those top five heavyweight index stocks which contribute almost 40 to 45 percent of the index weights they have been held up very smartly with the uh, with the long positions getting intact uh, so to my understanding there at least per index per se i'll say that uh, there are chances that uh, we might attempt uh, one more round of an upside but before before that we see a lot of consolidation happening before uh, before we see any further leg up on the upside so to my understanding, uh, there, there would be days of bouts of volatility because we have seen a sporadic move almost 350 points in a straight line in the last uh, seven days or so. So uh, there are chances that we might uh, consolidate before we make any fresh cash on the high side. So uh, the chances, uh, what I better believe is basically the bank nifty or have to be monitored very closely because it is near not, uh, it is relatively underperformed because of the kind of performance that we have seen from Reliance and as well as TCS. Uh, so there's a chance that uh, the next further leg of up move might be coming in the banks and the bank of team might be the one which can take the markets higher from here on. Okay, that's the view coming in on Nifty Bank Nifty, but let's also get you some option strategies going for the day and let's shift our focus then to the options corner. Navneet Daga has a bull call spread strategy on Bank Nifty, but before we proceed, let's take a look as to what this strategy means. Well, a bull call spread is employed when one expects a moderate up move in a security. In this strategy, a call option of a certain strike is purchased and a call option of a higher strike is simultaneously sold. Navneet, I'll come back to you, you have a bull call spread on Bank Nifty? Look, uh, basically, uh, that's a bull call ratio spreads. Um, uh, and the ratio spread normally you uh, you uh, you adjust your quantity on the higher side of uh, the, the stocks that you're selling. Uh, so I've chosen basically to buy 27,000 call options, which is at the money on Bank Nifty for the monthly series. And Simon Dennis is selling two lots of uh, 27,500 calls on the higher side. The currently, we will be able to execute the strategy in a spare of almost 75 to 80 points. And to my understanding, that's a good uh, uh, entry point. And expecting uh, the bank of as I said, that the, the, the chances that the kind of breakout that we see in the private banks, we might see a continuation of an uphold happening. Uh, the likes of HDFC Bank and um, the Yes Bank, and this Bank, all of them are in a very fine shape. It's looking likely that that can pull the market or the index higher along with it. So, uh, uh, employing the strategy, the maximum downside that I, one one uh, one can see if the market happens to expire below 27,000 levels, that is at the money, is 75 points that you are going, uh, you are giving as an outflow. If the market happens to move towards that 27,500 mark, then that's where the maximum uh, profit uh, profit area is. We can be able to pocket it in almost 300 to 400 points depending on where we expire. My targets are basically 27,500 for the for the monthly uh, expiry on the on the bank Nifty. Okay, so a bull call ratio spread, uh, that's what um, Navneet is playing when it comes to the bank Nifty. Uh, Jay, you have spoken to us about going long on the Nifty futures. Do you also expect the bank Nifty to move in tandem with the Nifty at this point in time? Yes, absolutely. You know, bank Nifty 
2 has broken out from that crucial 26,800 uh, resistance mark and uh, above those levels we are expecting uh, you know bank nifty in fact we had a target of 27,200 which has almost got achieved but now above those levels uh, 27,450 that should be the short term target and above those levels I would say 27,700, 750 can also be witness from Bank Nifty in this series itself so I am absolutely bullish and uh, till now 26,800 levels are not broken on the lower side the trend uh, continue uh, to remain positive hence uh, those who are already holding the long positions I would recommend them to trail their stop losses below 26,800 so as to minimize the loss. Okay, so bullish bets coming in on Nifty as well as Bank Nifty for the day. But that's about the indices. Let's also tell you in terms of stock futures what our experts are betting on in today's session. Avneet, uh, uh, what are you betting on in terms of stock futures for the day? Look, uh, the pattern continues. We have seen distribution happening on the mid cap side, and the large cap side has been very heavily, uh, very smartly held on the, uh, with the strong hands. So uh, I'll continue with a, with a similar kind of a pattern. Uh, the BML and BEL both have been with the favorite shots for us. Uh, it has worked out well for the entire last series or so. And it's looking like that continuation of momentum on the downside is seen. We're seeing the small bounces, they have been very, uh, very easily getting sold off. Uh, so to my understanding, it's looking like that the, these the, this patterns might continue on the, on the longer term frame as well. Uh, one can look to initiate go short on uh, BML in the current market price somewhere to 850 to 820 range and looking for a downside target of 750 to 760 in the in the next week or so. Uh, uh, the stock price should be placed at some uh, 850 range. That's where it has taken a multiple amount of uh, resistance in the last couple of days. Uh, the second uh, the second stock, to my understanding, uh, would be where the longs of uh, one can look for initial go short. And uh, in fact, I'll just uh, say that UPL that has started to uh, break down very important crucial support zone. So one can look to go short on that and uh, looking for an immediate downside target or something to do a 550 odd zone uh, with a small stop loss of 580 on the higher side. One can look to initiate the short at this current market price as well. Okay, um, so those are some strategies coming in from uh, Navneet. Ajay, what are you betting on? Well, I would say, see, from the current market levels, uh, you know, uh, I would still bet on the buy side only. The reason for that is, you know, uh, at the lower levels, I believe that there is uh, going to be a good support coming in. Hence, uh, I would say that uh, on the long side, there are two stocks which I will be recommending in today's trading session. The first uh, stock which I am recommending is LNT which uh, has clearly reversed from the lower end of the uh, falling channel. Its stock has been st forming high to side bottom. In fact, today we also got the news that LNT has received a fresh order of almost 3,500 crores. And uh, um, as a disclaimer, I would like to say that, you know, we had recommended a bull call uh, spread uh, on LNT. That's a bullish strategy. In the short term, we can expect 1365 on LNT and the stop loss of 1295. One can buy this. Second is a buy on HDFC. Now, again, a large cap, again, a nifty 50 stock. This stock too has clearly broken out from a consolidation uh, trend line uh, resistance by crossover and its momentum indicators. So, for, based on all these technical evidences, the probability of an upside on HDFC is quite high. Uh, target of 1990, one can buy this with a stop loss of 1920. Okay, so uh, well, some views coming in on stocks from our experts as well. I'm going to address a bunch of stocks where we're seeing tremendous strength in today's day of trade. Bajaj Finance is one of them. It's as some might put it, a rocket. It continues to make new lifetime highs. It's currently at around 24, 2440. It did move up above the mark of 2450. And there, it seems that there's no stopping of this stock at this point in time. It's up as another 1% in today's day of trade with uh, longs coming in through uh, today as well. Uh, Namneet, you know, We've seen a lot of strength in Bajaj Finance, and I know that very few out there will be brave enough to go and short Bajaj Finance at this point in time. Uh, that said, some may also be of the view that Bajaj Finance, while it may rise, it may not rise substantially considering the, um, the substantial up move that we've seen in the stock. How would you deal with Bajaj Finance at this point in time, say, using for futures or, op or options at, for, uh, at this point? Look, uh, these are certain set of stocks in the market which uh, are in a different orbit altogether. Uh, so whether it's been Bajaj Finance, whether it's been the likes of HDFC Bank, these are uh, these are the stocks which are creating fresh life highs uh, almost on a weekly basis. 
and uh, somebody is looking to go short on that can be can be uh, proved to be a very uh, very fatal when somebody is holding just keep trading stop loss on the higher side and somebody is looking to go uh, you know book profits uh, that's where one should look to you know the sell and otm calls on the higher side so bajaj finance are looking at 2500 call options are quite liquid one and uh, we are seeing a lot of activity out there somebody is holding it uh, one should look to go uh, one can sell the otm calls and uh, look to book profit once the stock moves towards that level of uh, Uh, once the uh, stock moves towards 2550 to 2500 levels, uh, so that's the better strategy rather than being uh, chasing the stock on and uh, and going short on the stock uh, uh, without having a ma- major of the trend or the data in place. So, to my understanding, uh, uh, those who are long should just keep trading the stock less higher until we see any major trend reversal happening on the stocks. Okay, that's Bajaj Finance for you. Going from strength to strength for this one. Uh, it's also been yesterday. There was some fresh long build-up seen for this counter. Well, it's time for us to shift focus to a couple of our viewer queries, and I guess we've got Mr. P. S. Krishnan who is calling us from Chennai. Hi, Mr. Krishnan. Good morning to you. Well, uh, thanks a lot for calling us once again. Tell us uh, what you want to know from our experts. Well, good morning to all of you for calling. Thanks for connecting me to the show. So, I have queries on three TikTok. And uh, I want to play them uh, through the futures route. Um, I'm looking, and I want to check with the experts to see whether there is three good levels to buy: UPL, South India Bank, and ICICI Prudential. Given that all of them have fallen significantly in the last uh, few weeks, right? And I thought I'll, I'll play it through the futures, take a long position in order to reach it. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to repeat the stocks: UPL, South Indian Bank, and ICICI Prudential. These three stocks you're watching out for, where you can. Uh, you you want to know from our experts whether you can take a position or not? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, Jay, I'll come to you. UPL has been uh, trending lower in the last three to four sessions. One is that. The other is South Indian Bank and ICICI Prudential. The viewer wants to know whether he can look to create fresh longs, considering the stocks have corrected for August futures. Absolutely no. From my side, on all of these stocks. When someone really wants to nominate, create a long position on futures, uh, and since this is an F and O show, so from uh, that point of view, I would say futures long position should be there wherein there is long build up, where is there is long a uh, good ups, upside momentum, and you know futures markets are always uh, generally you know uh, taken as far as the retail uh, participants are concerned for a trading angle, right? It's never for the hedging. So if I ask that gentleman, do you have that much of quantity in cash, and you want to Hedge it or something like that? No. Or you're sold in cash and you want to buy in futures? No. No. So just for speculation. And speculation has to be done where the momentum is with a clear stop loss. Now all of these stocks are in a downtrend. Shorts have been built up there. How can uh, you know there is a chance that you know technically there can be some bounce back, or there can be some support. But uh, it doesn't mean that you know one should actually you know uh, buy into this kind of a short positions uh, where wherein there is short positions build up or the stocks very which are in the downtrend. As of now, if you uh, in your show only mentioned that those stocks which are there in an uptrend are NIT Tech, Mindtree, you know the mid cap IT names. And Mindtree of course looks good. The build up out there on the futures is good for this series, and the stock is holding up well. On the upside, we can see the levels above 1100 as well. So why not to buy a Mindtree which is already an uptrend in a future segment rather than you know buying these stocks which are falling in anticipation of a bounce back. I mean that one. This strategy is adopted by someone who is actually building a portfolio in the cash segment. All right. Well, sound advice coming in from there, uh, Mr. Krishnan. I hope uh, that you can take some uh, takeaways from uh, uh, what um, Jay has uh, uh, been telling us about stocks which are uh, substantially weak in an otherwise very strong market. That said, uh, we'll move on and uh, take uh, more questions. Uh, the next one is on Twitter from Sachin, and Sachin says that uh, well, he has the M&M 960 call and he's bought it at 9.5. Uh, he's actually a couple of uh, questions, so I'm going to take the M&M call first, and then we'll go to the Yes Bank question that he has. Uh, so let's let's uh, bring up M&M 960 call and see where whether or not um, uh, you know he's making a profit or loss at this point in time. It's currently trading at around five, so he's he is losing out uh, to a, a little when it comes to this. Uh, can we also pull up the futures and see what the futures are of M&M are doing? Uh, of course, uh, the underlying uh, is uh, is. Largely flattish, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it's down as much as half a percent. Very little change in open interest for the July futures. Uh, Namneet, uh, how are you viewing trade on M&M, and uh, what would your view be on the 960 call specifically, which has been bought at around 9.5? 
Look, uh, MNM is not my favorite content in terms of being uh, being long on the market. So it has uh, it has moved from strength to strength, and again uh, uh, we we are seeing some kind of retracement coming back from almost 940 or soon to 915. Uh, to my understanding, the stock has got tremendous amount of support zone that uh, either in the area of 880 to 900 zone, it has not been able to make a dash below that. Uh, to, so it's looking likely that uh, there are chances that uh, we are nearing to that support area of the 900 zone. But um, the gent since the gentleman has bought 960 call options and uh, we are moving to the fag end of the expiry, uh, almost seven to eight trading sessions before we, we, we finally end up with an expiry move, we can move into that expiry week. Uh, to my understanding, uh, the, the making a case of immediate upside towards 916, getting the calls in the money would be very difficult. Uh, you might be losing on the time value. Uh, but however, uh, if the stock start, there are two ways to look at this trade. If the stock start to trade below 900, one should look to immediate exit. And uh, uh, the second way is basically if it start to move towards the 935 to 940 zone, you should look to book profits and move either move at, at cost even to move out of the call options. It doesn't merit uh, to carry on this position for long. All right, and so that's the view on MNM, uh, the 960 call. The other part of the query was with respect to Yes Bank, and uh, Sachin has bought the Yes Bank 400 call at around nearly two. Uh, of course, Yes Bank at this point in time is currently trading at around 370, so it's a good 30 points away from that call being in the money. Yeah, that that particular call is currently trading at nearly three points, and of course. Uh, uh, this is where he's making a little bit of a profit at this point in time. Jay, uh, what's your view on Yes Bank and what would you advise uh, he should do with his position in the 400 call? Four hundred call is quite uh, away from these levels, but I would say that see this this bank uh, has shown a uh, good performance in the recent past and it has recovered quite smartly. In fact, from the day the news broke out that you know uh, uh, it has acquired the license of the AMC, and we all know that since then the stock has been rallying. And uh, I, I think, see, uh, overall the stock seems to have formed a good short term bottom. Technically, if you see, then it has provided a breakout from a consolidation. In fact, it has formed a good rounding bottom pattern, uh, which is a good bullish continuation pattern, which means if the trend is continuing on the upside. And since it is a continuation pattern, I think there's still a lot of time left in this series. I would say it's just uh, you know, two weeks done and we still have two weeks, uh, another two weeks and my outlook on the bank nifty is good, positive. I think yes, bank will definitely see a bounce back from the current levels. Now, whether it go to 400 or not, I don't know, but then definitely an uptrend from here will continue on yes, bank and hopefully that we see above 400 levels and I think the probability of also the same happening is higher as of now. Uh, compact, you know, uh, and not it's, it's just not that you know the trend has reversed from up to down. So I would say that continue to stay bullish on Yes Bank. At least this is a short term target from the current market price. I would say in this series, what we can expect is 388 to 390 at least. And if we, even if it comes to those levels, I think you know the probability of this gentleman actually coming in in the money would be quite high. So yes, continue holding on Yes Bank. The momentum is absolutely bullish. And today's uh, you know, uh, correction, we are you know, seeing this as a profit booking and not any short build-up out on uh, Yes Bank. Okay, that's Yes Bank, which is trading weak. Remember yesterday also in the second half, there was a bit of weakness seen for this one. Um, we've got our next query coming in from Facebook. Pradeep Prakash writes to us. He wants to know if it's the good time to sell 10,600 put and PC jewelers 100 strike put. Uh, so, uh, Navneet, I'm going to come to you first. 10,600 put, is it the right time now to sell this put when we've already started to see some bit of unwinding? Yes, absolutely. To, to my understanding, that's a fair, uh, safe, and uh, strike to uh, to sell the puts, and um, they are uh, suggesting that there's a kind of a build-up that we're seeing on OTM strikes. Uh, and looking on the market participants or the, the traders are looking for a limited downside in the market. So, to my understanding, 10,600 is a safe bet to sell and uh, hold on for that expiry. Uh, there, there's almost a certainty that we are uh, closing about that level, and uh, you, you'll be able to make profit in that strategy. Uh, the second I missed out of which stock they didn't talk about. And Navneet, the other question was in PC Jewelers. Uh, our viewer wants to know if he can write the 100 put. Well, why do you want to venture into uh, the, the stocks which have been so, so, uh, so news flow driven, uh, um, with uh, so much of news flow driven? Uh, so, to my understanding, it's not that liquid enough, as well as uh, one should not look to go short on the, the, uh, on the options on PC Jewelers. So, kind of an avoid kind of a trade for me. 
Yeah, well, I, I reckon the probability is on, on getting anything right on PC Jeweler towards the long or the short side at this point in time will be fairly low, uh, considering uh, it has been essentially been driven uh, based on, well, news flow, as, as Navneet put it. That said, uh, there is a stock which is doing well and it's actually driving the markets up even higher. Uh, it's, it's also competing for with TCS uh, as uh, the largest market cap, market capitalization in the country, Reliance Industries. It's been going from strength to strength over the uh, previous few days. It's currently at around a well, 1,096, that's its underlying, advancing by another 1.3 percent, more in increase in open interest towards fresh longs. And Jay, uh, you know, I, we are getting a lot of questions on Reliance Industries. Uh, if you could, you know, tell our viewers about how you would approach Reliance Industries at this point in time using futures or options. I'll say, um uh, the probability of now reliance going below the breakout point of 1030 is low. Uh, the stock was consolidating, you know, since uh, October 2017. Although the consolidation range was moving higher, but the stock was consolidating. It was not trending since October 2017, and now it's July 2018. So this breakout has come you know, almost after eight months, and uh, obviously then it's going to last for a few months. Uh, the target on the upside in the short term comes to 1130. Uh, the positional target for this series would be somewhere around 1200. Uh, I think, you know, if you're targeting 1200 for Reliance, trading at around 1096, I would say a decent upside, 100 points, and on the lower side, you have around 60 points. Not a 1 is to 2 risk, out, but close to it. So you buy right now in futures. Uh, if you have that um, risk appetite of, you know, uh, if it all it goes below 1,030 and reverses uh, Jay, and fails. Uh, the, so, no. Jay, sorry to then interrupt. Then I think you just buy futures, else uh, you buy a covered call. Okay. Jay, one second. I think uh, one of our viewers has just sent in a query. Uh, he he got 1,020 call strike at uh, of uh, this current series. Uh, if you could just pull up that strike in the meanwhile. He wants to know if he should look to hold on to this strike, which is already at 75. I think his buy price was somewhere about uh, lower than that, and uh, or he should just trail stop losses. And actually, yeah, so Jay was talking about being a covered call on Reliance Industries as well. So Jay, please, uh, please finish your point. I think yes, one can continue holding on to this uh, call option. I think it, is, uh, it has become futures now because it, it, it is in the money. So whatever uh, gain is going to get is out of is going to be out of the delta, right? So uh, his delta positive, and I think it should continue holding this uh, call option of 1,020. Now, as far as uh, you know, the fresh positions are concerned, if someone wants to buy having a risk appetite of 1,030 as a stop loss, one can do that. Else, one can buy a covered call, have a covered call strategy wherein one can buy futures right now and sell a bit out of the money call options, um, maybe say uh, 1,160 or uh, 1,140. And I think that should be a good strategy. So either a covered call or a naked futures, uh, I'm, I'm there either with, with either, either of them because the bias overall on Reliance is positive. Okay, that's the call coming in on Reliance Industries. The bias is on the positive side. So if somebody's all, uh, bought in the money call strike, like 1020, which one of the viewers said, you can look to hold on. That's the advice coming in from Jay. But a whole host of other stocks are also moving around. Before we wrap the show, I just want to pull up Marico because this has been really strong, at least for the month of July. And the stock's gained almost 8 to 9%. It's continuously witnessing fresh longs uh, in the last few sessions. Very quickly, Navneet, uh, any thoughts on Marico? The counter now trades up above all key moving averages and today it's also hit its fresh 52 week high. Well, it's showing, starting to show a lot of strength of late. It's been a very sideways counter. We, we've seen uh, the traction coming back into the stock and um, uh, and the overall space in, in terms of FMTG is a consumer so we've been uh, doing good. So to my understanding, uh, one should look this trade, if somebody is looking to enter into it, one should look at it as a positional basis because the kind of breakout that one can see from here on, uh, it can take the stock higher in, the, in a different orbit. So to my understanding, uh, the, if the stock uh, is sustaining about 340, on zoom the chances that we might see a bigger breakout coming into the stock and uh, moving towards that mark of 400 is also possible so the uh, one should look uh, one should have a longer time frame as well as uh, uh, one should look this trade as a positional basis trade and one can still be long on the stock 
There you have it. That's the view on Marico. And Nifty, of course, at this point in time, is trading absolutely flat. Uh, and I'm going to take a moment to thank both our experts, Jay, as well as Navid, for joining us and taking us through their views, as well as solving some of our thank viewer you. queries. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the FNO Show. But lots more lined up, so stay tuned in the Bloomberg Quint.